Now, here's what happens. Here's the problem. If you glycogen, I'm eating my rice, I'm eating my potatoes all the way up, and I keep eating, then I start spilling over, I spill over, I spill over. Then what happens? Well, excuse me here. I'll grab this, and this other coffee cup, this becomes a fat cell. So I fill up my glycogen, all of it starts to spill over, and now I start to fill up this white fat cell. Yep, Dolce got it, but brother, tell me, when is the best time? When is the best time? Best time to eat carbohydrates is... What's up, guys? Mike Dolce, four-time world MMA trainer of the year. Today, we're talking about carbohydrates, but more specifically... What are the best times to eat carbohydrates to fuel activity, hit those PRs, ensure we're able to stimulate muscle protein synthesis while also not spilling over and make you fat? Before we get to that, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Click that little bell for notifications when new bomb-ass videos like this come out and also bang, bang. Give this video a thumbs up because I'm taking you to Gainesville, baby. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read from our Dolce Diet Certification Nutrition Manual, and I'm going to give you a little bit of additional context on exactly what carbohydrates, glycogen, and glucose actually are. Now, as I kind of scroll down, glucose is the most abundant carbohydrate produced by plants through photosynthesis. Did you know that? Probably not. Most of the carbohydrates we eat are converted to glucose to be used as full, as food. Now, the, the simplest form of carbohydrates we have in the body is glucose. The principal form of carbohydrate found in the blood is glucose, and glucose is not just the preferred, but the only source of energy for the brain. Lots of science dropped on you today. As we kind of continue on, here we go. Why are carbs so important? Each gram of carbohydrate, again, is four calories per gram. Red blood cells rely only on glucose for their energy supply. Hmm, what, wait, what, keto, what? Um, red blood cells cannot use fat or protein as fuel. Once again, glucose only. Both carbohydrates and fats do supply energy for some daily activities. Glucose is especially important for energy during exercise. Again, Gainesville. During intense exor exercise, carbohydrate will supply two-thirds or more of the total energy energy needed. One could say if you are following a ketogenic diet, a low carbohydrate diet, you're operating on approximately one third of your fuel resources. Therefore, you will perform about one third of the level that you should be performing, hence not stimulating muscle or stimulating muscle protein synthesis. No more Gainesville for you. Energy, sufficient energy intake from carbohydrate prevents production of ketones as an alternate energy source. Lack of carbohydrates in our diets causes our body to seek an alternate source of fuel for the brain. The breakdown of stored fat is a process called ketosis. It is, very, it is a very inefficient process. Glucagon is another hormone secreted by the pancreas. It stimulates the breakdown of glycogen to glucose to make glucose available to the cells of the body. Um, stimulates gluconeogenesis, the production of new glucose from amino acids or other non-carbohydrate precursors, which means carbohydrates in and of it themselves are actually protein sparing, which means if you eat a low carbohydrate diet or God forbid, a zero carbohydrate diet, your body will then start using the protein, the amino acids that you're consuming from the protein, right? So you consume protein-based products thinking I'm making gains, I'm getting protein. You have a low carb intake. So what happens? The protein you're consuming is broken down through a process called gluconeogenesis in the liver that actually creates glucose out of those amino acids that should be going to build those muscles. It's not going to happen anymore. You've literally halted the process. Uh, the recommended daily allowance for carbohydrate is 130 grams per day just to supply the brain, especially my brain, with glucose. Um, 
and then we get into sugar consumption a little bit more, diabetes and such. So this is a, this is a pretty comprehensive chapter that we have on carbohydrates. We really break everything down and explain it through our Dolce Diet Certification and Nutrition Conference. If you want to become a Dolce Diet Certified Coach, go to dolcedietshop.com. You can see when our next events will be coming up and so forth. But now I want to tell you about the most important times to consume carbohydrates, right? So we gave you a little bit of context a little bit of context. You understand why carbohydrates are so important. Now, remember, when you consume carbohydrates, carbohydrates are then converted into glycogen and stored in the muscle and in the liver, making them readily available as, or making the glycogen readily available as glucose. Glucose is the primary fuel source for working, contracting muscles, for the brain, for red blood cells, and so much more for the human body. The concept of, and I'm not begging on the keto folks out there, they just didn't know, right? Right? So most of the ketogenic folks, they saw a, a, a shiny new object and they, ah, they jumped on it because it's something new. It's something different. That must mean, oh my goodness, I'm special. And finally, I'm going to stand out. But no, ketogenic diet's been around for a really fucking long time, over a hundred years, easily over a hundred years now um, that people have been following and it comes and goes, comes and goes, comes and goes. It never sticks. Why does it never stick? Because it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work long-term. Long-term outcomes on the ketogenic diet are zero, right? Especially when we're talking about sustained weight loss, when we're talking about athletic performance. Heck, even when we're talking about longevity, the extension of a healthy life, ketogenic diet simply does not work because we are robbing the body of its primary fuel source. We simply cannot push. We cannot work. We cannot think. We cannot express ourselves as active, healthy, athletic humans in the absence of carbohydrate, right? We need that glucose. Once again, remember, glucose is the primary fuel source for the brain, for those working muscles. When we rob the body of glucose, when we dramatically reduce glycogen or reduce carbohydrate, when we reduce that intake, now we have no fuel. We have no gas in the tank. But if we eat too much, and this is the problem, if we eat the wrong kind, processed sugars, if we eat too much surplus, what happens? We spill over. Now, the human body can only hold so many. Picture my Wonder Woman cup right here. This Wonder Woman cup. Now, if I fill this cup up to here, I'm good to go. I have all the coffee I need to get me going so I can finish my activity bonk until I run out. Well, maybe I fill it up to here. Again, I really got to drink, 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 which is exercise, train, 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 consume, 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 consume all this coffee, aka glycogen expressed as glucose brrr, until I'm empty. Now I'm completely carb deple depleted and we bonk out. We've all heard about the, the triathletes and whatnot that bonk out. When they run out of stored glycogen, there's none left uh, and they can't transfer over. They can't utilize, readily utilize uh, new energy substrates and they bonk out. They have nothing left. If you glycogen, I'm eating my rice, I'm eating my potatoes all the way up and I keep eating. Then I start spilling over. I spill over. I spill over. Then what happens? Well, excuse me here. I'll grab this and this other coffee cup. This becomes a fat cell. So I fill up my glycogen. Brrr, all of it starts to spill over. And now I start to fill up this white fat cell. And then I'll put this on my love handle. I'll put this under my nipples. Ladies, I'll put this on the back of my arms. I'll put it on my jowls. I'll put this these fat stores all over my body. This Wonder Woman cup, this Wonder Woman cup lives in my bicep. It lives in my pec. It lives in my quads. It lives in my calves. This is where the glycogen is stored inside my lean, healthy, strong, sexy muscles. This is where all the fat is stored. So as I fill up this glycogen, brrr, it spills over into this fat cell. Okay, hopefully that helps. Let's say I only fill this up about 60, 80%, and then I work my ass off, high intensity resistance training, multi-joint compound movements, and I expend it. And I eat more oats and more fruit and more rice and more sweet potatoes and more quinoa, but not too much, and I train tomorrow. And fill it, reduce it, fill it, reduce it, this is what happens. This is what we talk about. This is what the Dolce Diet does. We never spill over our carbohydrate storage, our glycogen storage. We never spill over, but we always have all that we need to perform the activities. 
Eat until satisfied, not until full. Eat every two to four hours based upon activity, right? Dolce diet rule, what is it? Eat earth grow nutrients, um, eat every two to four hours based upon activity. Number two, rule number two, rule number two, motherfuckers, rule number two is we eat based upon activity, back on, back, or based upon activity, right? Rule number one, earth grow nutrients only, no processed foods, no poison, no, no, no garbage, so we're not eating all the candy bars and all the potato chips and all the, 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 the waxy maze bullshit supplements that are out there. We're only eating real food. We're eating potatoes. We're eating oats. We're eating rice. We're eating beans. Uh, we're eating produce. We're eating fresh food so we can adequately ingest, digest, absorb carbohydrate, convert it to glycogen, store it, and then express it later on as glucose. But we never spill over to fat cells. So this actually never gets stored on my hips. It never gets stored on my, 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 my man boobs. It never becomes man boobs. It only becomes pec, right? It goes, becomes pec, doesn't become man boobs right here, right? Not, not man boobs, that's my nip sticking out. It becomes really strong, powerful pec. I hope this is helpful for you. But now that we understand that, that we can and should be eating carbohydrates every single day, especially as long as we're training at a in a glycolytic fashion, which is higher intensity resistance training, which means the body converts and starts to utilize stored glycogen expressed as glucose for that exertion, for that activity. And... We also train low intensity. This is where I'm going to give you a bit of a list right now. Low intensity, steady state cardiovascular activity, where now we're not actually using this stored glycogen. We're actually using, bleep, we're using the stored fat. We're training at lower intensities. We're looking to oxidize stored body fat training aerobically. Aerobically, we're oxidizing the stored body fat, bleep, doing our list keeping all the glycogen, right? Because I'm not training glycolytic. I'm not burning this. I'm not utilizing this. Not training glycolytically, training lower. Whoop, low intensity, again, man boob right here, extra fat stored in this little cup. And low intensity, steady state cardiovascular activity in the absence of insulin brrr, melts off that fat, right? Does this make sense? This, I didn't have, I, I got to start doing a whiteboard for you guys, but I'm, I, I know my man Adam out there is uh, making this video look a hell of a lot better, but I like these cups. I like these cups, right? So now, again, when's the best time, Dolce? All right, we get it. Holy shit, we completely understand now. I understand. I get it. You completely cleared it up in lay speak. You didn't get all super stupid crazy and start taking out all your, your, your biochem charts. You actually made it super easy that anyone can understand. Man boob, peck, Wonder Woman, white cup. Yep, Dolce got it. But brother, tell me, when is the best time? When is the best time? Best time to eat carbohydrates is when you're fasted. Because when you're fasted, you actually have been using glycogen to keep everything working and active. Your glycogen level, like a like a, a video game, you'll see that health bar slowly ting, 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 um, depleting. When you are fasting, you're actually utilizing glycogen uh, considerably at a very high rate. It's very hard to keep the human body alive. Now remember, my BMR, I'm 215 pounds or so. My BMR is gonna be approximately 2,100 calories per day if I was laying in my bed, not moving at all in a coma. I'd still be burning about 2,000 plus calories per day. Just laying in my bed, staying alive, it takes about that much energy to keep the human body alive. It's a fucking hell of a lot. It takes more calories to keep your body simply alive, completely sedentary, not moving at all, than most of the activity I'm going to go and do throughout the day. Pretty crazy, right? So, fasted. After I wake up from my first sleep, my big sleep, I stop eating my, I have dinner, I finish dinner at seven o'clock at night, I go to bed at 10, I wake up at six, I hit my lists until about seven, 7.30. Well, that's been a 12 hour fast right there, essentially. Now it is time for me to have my first big hit of carbohydrates. That's why we have the breakfast bowl the oats and the berries and the seeds and the nuts and the cinnamon and all the good, healthy, delicious shit. My breakfast bowl is typically 75 to 100 grams of carbohydrates first thing in the morning. Usually my breakfast bowl is about three to one ratio of carbohydrates to protein, which means if it's 75 grams of carbs, it's going to come in naturally at about 25 grams of protein. A lot of people say, Dolce, what about the protein? I'm eating a four ounce fucking steak worth of protein in 
my breakfast bowl every day, motherfuckers. The, my breakfast bowl has the equivalent, my small, because I have a small breakfast bowl and a large breakfast bowl as I kind of cycle through my day or my week. My small breakfast bowl has the equivalent of full, of the protein equi equivalent of four whole eggs. So people look at my breakfast bowl and they're like, where's the protein, Dolce? You're a fucking idiot. You don't understand anything. You just sit in the corner, listen to Uncle Mike talk, and, and don't say a word. Okay, listen. So it's about a three-to-one ratio of, of, of carbohydrate to protein in our breakfast bowl, right? No animal proteins in there. God forbid you actually get amino acids from non-animal-based sources. We eat a shit ton of animal-based protein also. Now, first best time is breakfast after a fast. Perfect. That's why we love that list. Low intensity, steady state cardiovascular activity, because after that long quote fast, which is simply going to bed and waking up, we're not fasting, practicing intermittent fasting. We're not suggesting intermittent fasting and not eating for 12 hours is not intermittent fasting. It's simply living a normal fucking life. So we wake up, we go for that 30 to 60 minute walk first thing in the morning list. Once again, in the absence of insulin, the absence of insulin, and in the absence of insulin, our body is much more prepared or our body will much more efficiently oxidize that stubborn um, stored body fat, gender specific body fat, we call it, but it's the more stubborn problem areas of body fat that seem to stick and people don't understand why. It's a pretty easy concept to understand. I'll break down in another video. Now, the second best time to consume carbohydrate is when? You know this, when? You know this, immediately after workout, immediately after your workout, because what happened once again, we've completely squeezed out. Remember, remember, trained my ass off, barbell back squats, front squats, high box step ups, deadlifts, pendlay rows, underhand weighted jip, uh, weighted chin ups, the weighted dips, T bars, all the overstanding overhead military press, all the shit that we all do any anyway, every day I always talk about. That's exactly what we've done. Depleted all this stored glycogen. So what time is it? It's time to come back and fill it up. This is carbohydrate right there. Some good carbohydrate comes right back in. We fill up, we store this glycogen. This now, just picture this, this is white rice. This is quinoa. This is sweet potato. This is black beans. This is oats. That's exactly what this is. That's the form of carbohydrate that we're consuming. And we're taking that good, healthy, earth-grown, high net nutrient carbohydrate we're storing that glycogen converted from that carbohydrate. We're storing this back up again in the muscles. So now it's it's ready to be used. It is area specific, use specific. I have that stored glycogen right there, ready to go in my pec for when I do a push up, for when I do a bench press, for when I throw a punch. That glycogen is right there, ready to go, site specific, expressed as glucose. Bang! Put me in the game, coach. I'm ready to go. First best time is breakfast after a fast. Second best time is after your workout when you've expelled glucose, stored as glycogen once again. I hope this video is helpful. I hope you absolutely love this video. I hope you go back through our channel and you start looking at all the other amazing videos we have just like this, plus my behind the scenes of MMA series, the real stories of MMA that we're talking about. Many of you, there's a bunch of videos you want to see. Leave comments below. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know what videos you want to see. What other topics do you want us to cover? Now, we also want to answer your questions live. I want you to shoot me a video, a quick video. You can DM me on Instagram, at the Dolce Diet on Instagram. Shoot me a video. Like, hey, Mike, where do babies come from? Like, hey, Mike, like, how do you shave your pubes? Whatever the question might be, I don't care what the question is, DM me at the Dolce Diet on Instagram, a quick 30 second, 45 second, less than a minute, all right? A, a short little video, just asking a question. I will post it on this channel and I will answer your questions. I think that'll be really fun. As many of you who ask questions, as long as it's a, you know, a decent question, um, I'll answer it. Now, I, I don't care if you want to have fun. I don't care if you want to wear a funny mask or pretend to be me or pretend to be, I don't know, your wife or whatever it might be. 
Ask a question, though. I think that'll be enjoyable. Again, leave comments below. Subscribe to this channel if you have not. And if you're listening to this prior to May 16th, Saturday, May 16th, 2020, you need to register for the Mastering the Weight Cut Seminar. The first time ever I'm going to break down exactly how our elite athletes cut weight. This is never before published information. It's not in our books, no podcast, no YouTube channel. May 16th, Mastering the Weight Cut Seminar. Go to dolcedietshop.com to register your place right now. This will be limited. It will sell out. And if you're listening to this after May 16th, 16th, you can simply go to thedolcediet.com and start your own four-week or 12-week online personalized diet and exercise program. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for being here. Thank you so much for helping this channel grow, making this community what it is. And I am guaranteeing that I will every single time come here to do my best to give you everything you need, the most usable, actionable, evidence-based information with just a little bit of entertainment. You know, like, like, like that PG-13. So I basically have the sense of humor and intellect of a 13-year-old boy. I will give you that for free. I appreciate you guys for being here. Till next time, boom.